It's a tweet from at Bruno Sad, one, two, three. I've seen Twitter fall $30 since I first bought in. I should have sold a while back, but I didn't. What should I do now? Yeah. Holding the weakest of the big uh, social media companies, probably not the best strategy. Uh, I'm gonna go to the other end of the spectrum. If you really wanna own something, own Facebook held up much better than the, than the rest. Uh, in the short run, Twitter's got a lot to prove that they can find a way to monetize mm -hmm. their business, uh, and they've had, a, they've had a struggle up until now. So you wouldn't be bothering I would not, I'd, I'd sell that stock, uh, and if you wanna own social media, I would focus on Facebook, who's having great uh, success with video and, and monetizing their platform. Okay, um, Andrew is in Toronto. Go ahead, Andrew, you're on the air. Yes, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. David? May I please have your thoughts on Fortis? Sure. Thank you. So, you know, when we look at what's working in this market, uh, obviously some of the more defensive sectors are behaving better uh, than others. Uh, utilities are one of them. So utilities both in Canada and the U.S. outperforming Fortis, of course, is gas and electric utility. Uh, they've got some regulated and unregulated assets. Companies had a tremendous record over time of raising their dividend. It's a 4% yield in a world of 2% 10-year U.S. bonds. Mm -hmm. It's pretty attractive. Uh, it's not going to be a big participant in a resurgence in North American growth, but I'm not suggesting there is a big resurgence mm -hmm. in Canada. So uh, as a defensive holding and one that's going to pay you a really nice yield relative to the alternatives in the income space, mm -hmm. uh, I think you're not going to go too far wrong with Fortis. If at some point in the future you think we are going to see significant rise in interest rates, that's going to be the problem for this one. But in the near term, I don't see that as being a problem, and uh, you're probably going to do okay. It's behaving you know, very well relative to the Canadian market. Certainly, it's actually doing really well relative to North American markets. Here's an email from Louis. He wants to know about Bombardier. Would you buy the bomber at this level? <laughs> So I said earlier, we try not to buy broken, hoping that it's going to get fixed. You're not interested in fixer-uppers. So here's the situation with Bombardier, and you can factor your own odds, right? Quebec government's come in to, to fund the C-Series jet. Bombardier's got to come up with another billion dollars. If they can come up with it themselves, mm -hmm. they'll get 60% of the cash flow that's generated from that program if it's successful, okay? If the federal government comes in and funds it, they're going to get the, the, the money. Bombardier get 10% of the cash flow. Uh, if they can find an external source of capital or if they can sell off some assets, then they've got a shot at funding it themselves. Now, the C-Series program, they've sold about 200 jets. They probably have to sell another 200 to 300 to get to cash flow break even to make it a success. I don't like the odds. I just think that there are other, other uh, companies that have evidence that things are going well now and getting better. I'm not a big believer in buying a turnaround. Um, I think it's going to be tough for Bombardier going forward. I mean, at just over a dollar, it kind of looks cheap, optically, yeah. because it's a optically. low price. Yeah, you know, yeah. I had somebody say to me one time about Air Canada before they went bankrupt, you know, how much could I lose? I said, well, go to zero, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and a dollar can go to zero. And not to say that that's going to happen, but it may wind up being that the bondholders get paid and the equity holders don't get left with a lot. I just don't like to take those kinds of risks. Uh, I'd like to have a little bit more, something more solid under my feet. Time now for the Market Call Minute. Early in Aurelia wants to know about Canadian Tire. Uh, I'd prefer to own Home Depot, but I would be okay with Canadian Tire. Mark in Winnipeg, Manulife. Uh, Manulife, uh, I'd prefer to own Great West uh, than Manulife at this point, or look at property and casualty in the U.S. like Travels Group or Fairfax Financial in Canada. And what has you cool on Manulife right now, David? Well, look, um, they're, they're dependent on the return that they get in their portfolio, and we have very, very low interest rates, and the rates are not looking like they're ticking higher soon. That would be helpful to Manulife in the very short run. Uh, I think that's the pressure on the stock. Gary in Dryden, Ontario asks about Visa. Visa. We like payment systems. I like both Visa and MasterCard. I like the, the companies behind the technology also, um, but uh, I, would buy, I would buy Visa. Um, we've got uh, Drav in Toronto wants to know about Netflix. Okay. 
So this is a disruptive company and it's one that uh, I would like to own again. We don't own it uh, in any size currently. Um, they are, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, hitting the leading stocks right now in the market. Uh, but uh, this is one that I think is going to do very well over time. It's a very disruptive company, uh, and I would look for on any strength in the market to look to buy the stock. And finally, Mike is asking about Baytex. I just think you have to steer clear. They've got falling production. They've got a lot of debt. There's, in the U.S. oil and gas industry, companies are going to be $100 billion short on their cash flow this year. <laughs> And ultimately, I think there's going to be a funding problem for a lot of companies that need to raise either debt or equity. So I would be very careful with companies with decline in production and companies that are in a, in a tough spot financially. We have got to take a break and we're going to have David's top picks after this.